I'm going to explain how the idle circuit works in the Bing constant velocity carburetor. This is the carburetor body with most of the pieces removed from it. And uh, this is the float bowl that fits onto the bottom of the body. So in normal operation, there's fuel in this float bowl. The idea for getting fuel into the carburetor is that through the throat of the carburetor, the slide fits in here and it has a small passage that creates what's called a venturi. That creates a high speed air flow and when you have high speed air you have low pressure. That low pressure sits right over the main jet hole and fuel is pulled up through the main jet and then into the airstream to be mixed and going, go into the engine. So under normal operation the fuel can come through here because there's enough of a vacuum to pull it up and get it into the airstream. The problem happens at idle because on the other end of the carburetor next to the engine there's this butterfly plate that fits in here and it's almost entirely closed at idle. So there's very very high restriction very little flow through the body and consequently not enough suction or low pressure to pull the fuel up through the main jet. So if you look carefully you'll see that there is a tiny hole right here just before the butterfly and that hole is uh, seeing the vacuum from the engine because when the engine's running it's actually behaving like an air pump and then it's creating a very low pressure here as it's sucking air through the carburetor. So this little hole actually is at pretty low pressure. So the design of the idle circuit is to take advantage of that little hole and to pull air in through a smaller orifice here, a smaller fuel well, and that's the idle fuel well. This is the idle jet that fits in there, and it has a little orifice in the top and some smaller holes drilled around the side, and it screws right in there. <clears throat> now, that hole that I talked about here, the little one that's right where the low pressure is from the engine, actually runs through a passage to the fuel well and the other edge of the fuel well has a passage that runs all the way to the airbox side of the carburetor. This is higher pressure air, this is lower pressure air, so we can pull air through this passage and into the bottom of this well and it will create enough vacuum to pull fuel into the well through the need through this uh, jet and out through the little air tube holes here so it's able then to suck fuel out of the float bowl when the engine's running at idle because i'm actually able to get a much lower pressure down in this well than I can get in this one. So the other main piece that goes into the idle circuit is this adjustment screw with a very fine needle tip and it goes into this well here and it opens or closes the little hole that's seeing the high vacuum air from the engine and so it's allowing more of the fuel to come through this passage and into the engine. As I open it up, I get more and more fuel coming out, mixing with the air going into the engine. So it's actually metering the fuel from the idle jet. As I tighten it down, I have less and less fuel going into the engine, and as I open it up, I have more and more fuel going into the engine. One other thing that goes on in the design 
is that as the butterfly valve begins to open more, you want to stop metering fuel through this uh, uh, idle fuel jet. You really don't want it to keep working. You want it to stop working because you're beginning to get fuel coming in through the main jet. So as the plate opens up, the pressure difference between this point and this point actually goes down and eventually it reaches a point of pressure difference too small to pull the fuel up through this uh, idle jet and so it essentially quits putting fuel into the intake to the engine. So that's how the idle circuit works.